This is Eric from Pack Hacker, and today we're talking about the Tropic Feel Hive backpack, which I've been testing for the past two weeks. If you find this video helpful, make sure you subscribe so we can continue making content like this to help you travel smarter. Let's dive in. So as far as the external components go, there's a lot going on here, so let's just jump right in. The external materials are made of 99% recycled polyester, and then there's 1% of recycled polyurethane in there too. So there are a few different kinds of materials going on here. This front part here and the boot area is a little bit thicker and a little bit more water resistant, which is nice for when you set the pack down. And then these areas up here aren't as, don't feel as durable, but they still feel durable enough for the bumps and knocks of travel. And as you look around this pack, there really aren't any areas that have, you know, taken a beating. And I typically beat up my gear pretty well. So I think it's a testament to how well these materials have held up so far. We've got uh, YKK AquaGuard zippers throughout the exterior of this pack. And then we've got regular YKK zippers on the interior. We've got some, a mixture of Duraflex and then these um, hard metal like hooks when it comes to the different hardware on this pack. So the Duraflex hardware, if you don't know, is one of the better brands when it comes to the hard plastic hardware. And then we've got this metal stuff, which is just durable and looks pretty sleek, which I dig. Looking around, we have quite a few different like attachment points and stuff like that. So we'll get into some of that later, but there is a water bottle pocket here on this side, as you can see. I don't love this water bottle pocket for water bottles. It's really small. Like you can just barely fit like a standard water bottle in there. So like the, the 32 ounce Nalgene that I carry does not fit inside of here, but it's really good for like a small travel tripod or even a, a little bit larger of a tripod. And we have this stretchy elastic fastener here. You can see that it stretches that you can wrap around there. My tripod was actually so short I needed to extend the head a little bit, but it's a good, th good spot for things like that. Moving over to the other side over here, we have some compression straps and these ones are not elastic. They're just regular strap material. So you're not gonna get stretch out of them, but they're adjustable. So you could put like a height trekking poles or some tripods would fit in there too. Or if you have like ice picks or something like that, you could do that. On the front face here, we have these little attachment points, which you can attach the DOP kit or the tech pouch, which we don't have, but it's nice that you can keep it on the front and you have ready access to it if you need it. There is a little small slide pocket right there too to put some extra gear. Up top, we've got this, so where is it? This little handle right here and the handle on the side too. And on the back panel, we've actually got a trolley sleeve that pops over and then you can secure the shoulder straps. So then you can use these handles a little bit easier without the shoulder straps really getting in your way while you're trying to carry it. So the back panel here is pretty structured, which some of you will like and some of you might not. Starting with the back panel here, this um, the padding is just very dense. So I like that. I like kind of a more rigid frame, but if you're using something more cushy, you might not like that so much, but I do like it and it is pretty breathable. It's got some nice air flow channels here and then it is mesh, so that helps as well. On the shoulder straps, we start with load lifters here at the top. Quite a few different attachment um, points and straps and stuff like that, so you can attach different gear here. Got the sternum strap, which is on a rail, so you can make micro adjustments. Doesn't slide super easily, which I dig, so it's not gonna get out of your perfect spot once you find that perfect spot for you. Moving down here, we've got this hip belt, which sits really high on me. I'll show you when I put this thing on, it just kind of is more of like a belly strap for me. Um, I am a bit taller, so I think this maybe is designed for shorter people. But something that's really unique about this hip belt is that it's actually a sling. So it hooks in here with a hook and loop fastener. Just try to pop that. There we go. Oh, there. It's taking me a minute to get it out, which I think is a good thing. You don't want it coming out when you don't want it to. So we just have a little mini sling here. So maybe when you get to your destination or if you don't want to use the hip belt, you can just use this thing as a sling. It's pretty small. There's not a ton going on inside, but I think it is a very neat piece of modular gear that a lot of packs, a lot of packs don't do hip belts well anyways. So having a sling, I think is pretty unique and the hip belt does work. It's just a little bit higher up than I'd like it to be. So as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, this thing really is high up here. So my belly button is like right here and it's above my belly button. So I will say that this does feel weird, but it does do a pretty good job at what you'd expect a hip belt to do. It's just kind of oddly placed. It kind of keeps the bag from, you know, bouncing around while you're walking with it. I don't think I'd take this thing 
on an extended hike or anything like that. But I will say when I first put it on, I was like, wow, have I like gained weight or something like that? And then I realized that it was just the placement of where the hip belt was at. But overall this, I find this pack to be very comfortable. It is, you know, a good size for my frame, I think. I think if you have a smaller frame, it could feel a bit large at times. But for my specific frame, you know, I'm about just over six foot. I really like how this fits. The shoulder straps have that nice curvature that works for my body. It might not work for everybody, but for me personally, I just find this thing really comfortable. So the exterior of this thing is pretty unassuming when it comes to exterior pockets, but there is quite a bit going on here. So this is, I believe it's called like the spider web, ne spider web netting or something like that. And there is a smart packing cube 12 liter. We've tested the 10 liter, but they make a 12 liter that integrates with this nicely. So you can have your packing cube, you know, added onto this pack. And that's how this pack can go from such a small literage to such a large liter, which is one of the ways. So basically you would take both of these clips off here at the top, and then you slide that inside of here, inside this pocket. It's got a hook and loop fastener there for when you're not using it. And then you put this through, there's two little eyes here at the top, you put it through and then you attach it like that. And then that is attached up here on the front and you have, you know, still have all that space in the main compartment and your clothes are quick to access if you need to. I wouldn't, you know, wear it around like that all day. But moving to the bottom here, we have a kangaroo pocket. As you can see, there's two zippers here. We'll get to this one later. But we've got this one right here. I think this is actually probably the most versatile pocket on this pack. This pops out like this. And then there's these two little attachment loops right here and you just attach these here. So this is not, you know, a waterproof pocket or anything like that. You know, water could get inside of there, but it's a good spot to put things that you don't want in the main compartment, whether that be shoes or if you have a water bottle that won't fit in the side pocket or maybe a leaky water bottle that you don't want to put too close to your bag because obviously this is underneath the bag. So if it leaks, if anything, it's going to come down. And we also have these stretchy attachment points here. So if you wanted to, you know, stick like a yoga mat or something under there, or even you might be able to put like a fishing pole or something, a tripod, you could put a lot of things on here and just adds quite a bit of space on the bottom here, like, you know, put your lunch there. You could do just a lot of things with what's going on right here. Moving up to the top of the pack here, we have a quick access pocket and it's got like a nice little, you know, wide U or N shape. And I've just got my phone stowed inside there right now. Good spot for your phone. It has a soft material here. So if you do put electronics inside of there, it's going to keep them fairly, um, you know, safe and not against a rough material. Then we have a small zippered compartment here. Typically I have my sunglasses in here, but I left my sunglasses at home today on accident. It's very uh, cloudy today, so I didn't bring them. That's typically where I throw my sunglasses and I haven't had any issues with them breaking. There's not a ton of padding here on either side, but um, no issues with them breaking. Then we have a little ring right here that you could put your keys on if you wanted to keep them safe and not move around. So good quick access pocket. You can access that pretty fast while you're on the go. Moving to the back panel, we have one last pocket here. This is kind of a hidden pocket. You can kind of see it while you're wearing the bag, but it's kind of hard to notice, at least to my eye. So this is a good spot to stow like your passport or something like that. Let me pull that out of there. We have our little pack hacker passport. You could also stow your, um, your wallet here if you have a small enough wallet, but I will say anything too bulky, you're going to be able to feel it kind of bulging out and then you're going to feel it on your back and it's not going to be the most comfortable. So something like a passport, it's just, it's not that thick. You're not going to feel it through that padding, especially because this is pretty rigid padding. So I really like the inclusion of that, especially because this is a travel backpack. You're going to have sensitive travel documents or things you want to keep safe and with you at all times, you might not want to leave them in, you know, the safe at the room or something like that. You want to have it with you so you can throw it there. So that is all of the external compartments and it's time to get into the main compartment, which in my opinion is where most of the fun's at. So let's hop right in. We've got a nice clamshell opening here and it flops over like this. Quite a bit going on inside of here, but also kind of simple depending how you look at it. So I'm actually going to take this out right now and just talk about what's in the bag natively. So we've got on the lid here, this top part is actually the laptop compartment. So I'm really, I really don't love that. I think it's maybe just a me thing because as you can see right now, this is really heavy. And as you open it, like it just wants to fall like that. So if you have your laptop in there and you, or maybe you forget that it's in there, or you're not thinking and you open it quickly and you have this set on a hard surface, you could really whack your laptop. And there's not a ton of padding here. There is some, it's, if you have the packing cube on the exterior that will cushion it a little bit, but it just, you know, I don't love that. And it's also the weight is away from your bag. So it does make this space more usable, but 
I just am not completely sold on that, but I think again, that might just be a me issue, but you can fit, you know, a big old laptop in there. I've got my 16 or 15 inch, sorry, inside of there right now. And it secures with a hook and loop fastener there. We've got two zipper pockets here, one small one that's just, you know, like good for pens, maybe some cable stuff like that. And then one larger one, got my wallet and a protein bar in there right now. This is mesh so you can see what's inside there, which I do like. Moving on to the back panel here, we've got two more pockets here. Just got a portable charger in one of them and a little speaker that I'm testing in the other. So nice little zipper pockets, two different zippers so you can get into them. And this is kind of, I don't wanna say hidden, but depending on what modular options you're using, this stuff's normally covered. So this is another good place where you can kind of hide stuff um, that you don't really want to be seen. It's obviously inside the pack, but just thought that that was worth noting. But where, where the real fun comes in is you have two real modular options, at least at the time uh, that I'm recording this. This is the Camera Cube, I believe XXL. So this fits nicely inside of here. As you saw, there is a bit of room here on the top. That's where I had my tech pouch stored, which is kind of right inside there. So what you can do with this is obviously you can just take this out and set it somewhere, but you can also open this lid here. We've got some nice storage on the lid side and it's got a hook and loop receiver, I guess you would call it. And so this can attach on here like this. So you can kind of use this like a camera backpack. So every time like you open up the bag, you're like, oh, I need to take a picture. Ah, let me get my camera real quick. And you don't have to go through two things. You can just use it kind of as a camera backpack. This does make me a little bit worried with um, the laptop here, just so, like this could like possibly come off and my laptop could come out. But again, that's just me being overly anxious, I think. But I do like this design. I think it's really unique and I used it quite a bit as a camera bag just to kind of get, you know, to test this bag. And also with so much heavy stuff in there, this bag still proved to be pretty comfortable. The second option that we have is the Tropic Fuel wardrobe, which is this basically big, huge, ornate packing cube that you can pack a bunch of different kinds of things inside of. There's a bunch of different organizers. And then what you do is you kind of close it up and secure the sides and it'll fit inside of here. But as you can kind of notice, it's actually taller than the side right now. So there is an expandability option on this backpack. So that other zipper that I said we would mention that we would talk about earlier, this zipper goes all the way around. Find where it is. Here we go. And you get quite a bit of extra space there. So, you know, that's about, you know, a little bit over an inch or something like that. And now this is going to fit inside and you can kind of expand it. And then when you get to your location, you can hang this up in your hotel, Airbnb, whatever. And then you have the open space in the pack. So you can kind of use these in tandem in some interesting ways. Like if you're going, you know, on a flight, you could put this inside of here for the flight and this could be your personal item. When you get there, hang this up, put this back in your bag and then you've got a camera backpack and you've got a wardrobe at the hotel. So there are, you know, quite a few different ways to use this pack and it is a unique way of using space, I think. I haven't really tested a backpack like this other than other Tropic Fill backpacks that we have here in the office. I will say that without these different, you know, modular things, it does feel a little bit naked and there isn't a ton of organization here because it's built to be used with these different modular options. So that is something to consider. I don't know if I would get this backpack without those options, but there's a ton of different stuff you can look at on the Tropic Fill website and their YouTube channel to get a little bit of inspiration when it comes to this backpack. So there you have it, the Tropic Fill Hive backpack. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next one.